Hello my dear students, hope you all are fine. My dear students, we have started our second chapter that is the living world and I am very happy to say that a lot of students are taking part in the activities that I give in my videos. So in my last video also I had shown you the pictures of the students who had done the activity. So in today's class also I am going to show you the pictures of some students who have done the activity given in my previous video. So here is the picture of Shivraj Thamale from 6th standard. Now this student has very nicely done the activity and there is one more student. Her name is Vaishnavi Hosle. So both of them have done the activity. So what was the activity if you remember? You were supposed to tie a plastic bag on the leaf of a plant okay and after a few hours you were supposed to record your observations so the observation was that water droplets get collected on the inside of the plastic bag now why does this happen because the plants uh, they uh, give out water vapors okay so the water vapors is given out by the plants because the plants they perform photosynthesis the gaseous exchange takes place okay and these water droplets are collected on the inside of the plastic bag so this activity was done very nicely by both of them and i am really very happy that the students are taking interest and i want other students to also participate in the activities next time okay now my dear students let us begin my today's class so if you all remember in my previous video we had learned some of the very important characteristics like the growth okay and the intake of food and respiration and excretion so these four important characteristics we studied about the living organisms so in plants as well as in animals all these characteristics are present right now we are going to study about our next important characteristic so but before that there are some actions that I am going to discuss over here and you have to tell me what will be your response okay so have you experienced this what happened immediately after the following actions so first is light flashed suddenly into your eyes so see what happens when light is suddenly flashed into your eyes. What will you do? You will just close your eyes. So why you will close your eyes? Because you don't want your eyes to get hurt. Okay. So that is your response given by your body that you should close your eyes. Then second one is suddenly you felt a pin prick. So if somebody has pricked a pin onto your hand, what will you do? You will feel a sharp pain right and you will start screaming so that is your response right then the next one is the leaves of the mimosa plant were touched see my dear students this mimosa plant is a very special plant okay now this plant is not like other plants when you touch the other plants they don't show any kind of movement okay even if you uh, even if you take out their leaves or even if they are cut they don't show any kind of movement but this plant it is a very sensitive plant the moment you touch this plant they start closing their leaves so this shows that even the plants they are sensitive towards the uh, you can say various stimuli and they also show some movements okay now here is the picture of mimosa plant it is there in my balcony okay and i am giving you one more activity today that if you know this plant if you have seen this plant okay you have to make a picture you have to record a, a video where you have to touch this plant and you have to record your observation so let me see who gives me who does this activity okay now the the next one is at sunset lamps on the street or courtyard are lit and insects gather around the lamps so what happens 
at the sunset uh, lamps on the street or courtyard are lit so when these lights okay they are lit the insects they gather around the lamps because these insects they are very sensitive towards this light and therefore they gather around these lamps so what are we learning about over here is nothing but our response towards a stimulus okay so what is a stimulus stimulus is any action okay that is done on the living organisms and then some sort of responses are given by the living organisms so that is our next characteristic it is called as responsiveness towards a stimuli and movement so my dear students i will just read these points and then i will explain it to you one by one so living things act in various ways when responding to a stimulus if you suddenly enter a cow shed the cows and buffalo stand up they begin to move one or two may even start mooing these are all movements so these animals they show movements right because when you go to a cow shed the animals the cows the buffaloes they don't know who you are so you are an unknown person therefore they get alert and they start moving here and there okay so that is the response given by these animals so the next is a creeper planted in the courtyard leans towards a support the creeper plant it leans towards a support it cannot grow on its own okay a potted plant placed in a window grows towards sunlight so the potted plant you can see a potted plant over here the potted plant grows towards the sunlight so that is again the sunlight is a stimulus and the growth of plant towards the direction of the sunlight is the response given by the plant okay it means that plants to show movement the plants to show movement okay in most of the cases we cannot recognize them but they definitely show the responses or the movements so it means that plants to show movement living things move of their own accord the movements or the change taking place in a living thing at such a time is their response to a stimulus an event that occurs in our surround surrounding is a stimulus so any event that takes place in our surrounding is a stimulus and the ability of living things to respond to a stimulus is called their responsiveness to a stimuli i hope you all have understood okay so now next is reproduction so now my dear students reproduction is another important characteristic of living organism so what is reproduction it is giving birth to the new ones so each and every organism gives birth to their new ones okay so i'm just reading this and then i will explain okay living things produce other things like themselves some animals give birth to their young ones some lay eggs their young ones hatch out of the eggs so for example birds they lay eggs okay and some animals for example horse cats dogs which are called as mammals they give birth to their new ones okay so it was in the case of animals in plants too reproduction takes place so for example you have seen how uh, the uh, seed when it is sown into the ground okay from that seed a new plant develops okay so there are various ways by which reproduction takes place in plants so new plants are produced from the seeds stems or leaves of plants okay now the process by which a living thing generates a new living thing like itself is called reproduction or procreation so this is the definition of reproduction the process by which a living thing generates a new living thing like itself is called reproduction or procreation i hope you all have understood so here two uh, more pictures are given this picture uh, of the plant bryophyllum is given now in bryophyllum plant 
another uh, plant uh, generates okay from the leaf of the plant this is again a very unique plant from the leaf only another small leaflet appears and from this leaf a new plant can be regenerated and over here the twigs of roses are shown okay so the rose can be uh, the rose plant can be regenerated with the help of small twigs okay so these are the ways of reproduction in plants now a definite lifespan so now my dear students let me tell you another important characteristic of living organisms it is a definite live, a lifespan so all the organisms on this planet have a definite lifespan okay for example the dogs have a definite lifespan of around 12 to 18 years they can't grow more than that age okay for example human beings we have the maximum lifespan of 100 years okay some people can live even more than 100 years okay so but that is our lifespan so just like that some of the animals uh, all the animals all the organisms on this planet have a certain lifespan so at a certain stage of life living things become capable of reproduction later on in life repro uh, reproduction stage their organs become weak and still later their life comes to an end in other words living things die so all living things they die after a certain lifetime so the lifespan of different animals and plants are different some examples the lifespan of the dog is about 12 to 18 years while the ostrich lives for 50 years okay so now here can you see two pictures one is of a uh, tortoise so the lifespan of giant turtles okay it's a turtle found on the gala Pegos Island in South America. So this turtle has the uh, lifespan of almost 170 years. So it is such a big lifespan. Then another is of this insect. It is a mayfly. Okay. So on the other hand, the lifespan of the mayfly ranges from 1 hour to 24 hours. So it is such a less lifespan okay of this mayfly it ranges from only one hour to 24 hours so i hope you all have understood what is a definite lifespan okay now the next we are going to study about the cells of the living organisms so that is again important characteristic of living organisms but before that here you have to observe these pictures observe a honeycomb and a wall what are they made of so a wall is made up of bricks can you see the wall it contains lot of bricks which are put together and honeycomb also uh, it is made up of lot of you can say comb like structures so these two you have to observe our body also contains very small cells which are a very uh, you can say just like these uh, you can say the bricks of wall and these honeycomb like structures our cells also there are so many of them and they are bounded very close to each other okay now you may have seen the small compartments of a honeycomb so these compartments are joined together to form a honeycomb a wall has bricks to construct a wall we firmly join the bricks together okay so you firmly join these bricks together so just like that even in our body there are millions of cells okay so these cells they work in our body and they perform a lot of functions so about this you will study in your higher classes okay now living things are made of small units called cells so a cellular structure is another a very important characteristic of living organisms so all the living organisms they have got different kinds of cells 
so the living things are made of small units called cells so all the actions and processes in the bodies of living things are brought about with the help of these microscopic cells so why they are called as microscopic cells because they are very small in size and they cannot be seen without the help of a microscope so some living things are made of a single cell these are called unicellular organisms on the other hand the living things that are made of many cells are called as multicellular organisms so let me show you here can all of you see unicellular organisms so these are nothing but the single celled creatures their body is made up of single cell for example amoeba okay and paramecium so these two are the microorganisms which are made up of single cells whereas we have multicellular organisms for example the huge trees the birds the animals all the insects okay so they are the multicellular organisms their body is made up of many different types of cells okay so the amoeba and other microorganisms are unicellular while man cow mouse cockroach elephants banyan tree the onion etc are all multicellular organisms so all the characteristics of living things are seen in every cell of a living thing whether it is unicellular or multicellular okay so all these characteristic i hope you all have understood okay so now it is the time for homework now your homework is fill in the blanks with the proper words from the brackets so for all these fill in the blanks the options are given you have to choose the correct option and write the correct answer okay so now you have to write these answers and you have to show me your answers so with this i conclude my today's class so we will meet in our next class so have a nice day to all my students